guys there is bribery in Nairobi in small letters and then there is bribery in capital letters in Ghana if you want to find out more stick around to find out hi guys how are you doing welcome to another episode of the vlog my name is Antero Ganga and today I want to discuss some of the things that I hate or some of the negatives about leaving in Ghana now if you're faint-hearted stop watching this video right now if you're not open-minded stop watching this video right now I'm not saying all these things to make Ghana look bad or anything of that sort I am saying these things because I know that there's room for improvement and when people point out things that are not working right then there's room for these things to be improved point number one bribery you guys the bribery in Ghana is on another level I am a Kenyan and when I tell you the bribery in Ghana is on another level it really is on another level it's not a joke oh it's not a joke you guys everything is money if you don't have money you're not going to get the most basic of services and it's really worse for us who are foreigners case in point something that costed me fifty dollars as bribe money in Kenya costed me six hundred and fifty US dollars in Ghana how 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 okay in Nairobi you just have to pay one person okay who is going to fast track the whole process for you and give him $50. In Ghana, you have to pay all the nine people. Like the first person, you pay the sec the watchman, you pay the secretary, you pay the get man, you pay, you pay everybody up the chain of command. It's so crazy. Like you're denying your, your people's services because of what? Because of what? I mean, here's my thinking. Even in Nairobi, I really had to do it. It's not that I condone it, but it's the reality is the life that we live in i've done a course on political economies and economic development with mit <coughs> big school expensive school i paid a lot of money to sit in that class corruption is not necessarily bad if you have to pay money to get services going you do but corruption and extortion are two different things i feel like in ghana it's modern day extortion which is not right you guys it really isn't right you want passport you pay bribe you want visa, you pay bribe. You want residency permit, you pay bribe. You want work permit, you pay bribe. You need your driver's license, you pay bribe. And that takes me to the second point. Public service in Ghana is so, so slow. It's unfathomable. It really is unfathomable. And I'm an African speaking like this, you guys. In Kenya, it's the same bullshit, but it's, it's, it, the levels are different. It, it's just different. How does somebody, my friend Divine, still use a, 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 a temporary driver's license because he hasn't been able to get his permanent driving license from 2019, you guys. When the temporary one expires, he goes, they stamp it for him, he continues. Give the man his driving license. Like, what the hell? <laughs> no, seriously, what the hell is going on? You know, and if you go to that driver's license office, you will think it is Makola Market on a market day. It is packed to capacity. Do your job. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Get these people out of the way. Like, give them the services they need. Get them out of the way. And speaking of services... Guys, have you tried public health care in Ghana? No, seriously, have you? If you have money, go to a private hospital. And that's the truth. I'm not even going to sit here and lie to you. Ask how many people they've gone, particularly when you're a foreigner and you're not used to how things work there. My friend, you're so sick. The nurse will pass you. The nurse will pass you. The, the people who are dying, like she really doesn't care. Healthcare, and I'm not even excusing it because it's the same thing here in Kenya and in Nairobi. I don't know if they're just overwhelmed and the government is not giving them the support they need. So they are unable to help every single person that walks in through their doors with the swiftness that they need to help you with. Case in point, somebody was really sick. We took them to the hospital. Personally, I didn't know. It was in also the neighborhood that I stay. When we took them to the hospital, this person is like in severe pain, guys. I'm not even joking. And they were just like, ah, small pain. It's no more. For them, it's it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. And I'm like, why are you in the healthcare service if you're not compassionate, if you're not passionate, if you're not going to offer these services to people? But also on the flip side, do they have gloves? Do they have drugs? Do they have injection? Are they paid well? Are they enough? Are they just working eight hours a day or they're working crazy shifts? So there's a really big, big disconnect when it comes to health. 
The other thing about being slow, Ghana is slow. My guy, Ghana is slow. Ghanaians are slow. Ah! I have a meeting with somebody at 7 a.m. In fact, it's one of your media celebrities. Oh, 7 a.m. I'm there at 6.30 in the morning. Actually, I arrived at 6.15 and it took me a minute to figure out where the place was. So 15 minutes, 6.30, I was sitting there. I called them. They're like, aha, I'm on my way. 7 a.m., 7.30, 8, 9, 10, 11 a.m. You can't make this stuff up, guys. I'm telling you, you can't make this stuff up. This person shows up at 11 a.m. I ask, yo, what's up? What happened? And they're like, ah, ha, ha, ha. There's traffic in Accra. Excuse me. Excuse me. Are you new to Accra? You're born and bred here. Is it today that you've known Accra has traffic? Wake up at 4 a.m. in the morning if you have to. I mean, you can't try that in Nairobi. Like, you literally can't. On corporate meetings, like you can do that on your friends, but corporate, somebody will pick the next person. They say be there at seven, some people will be there at six. So, so if you're if you're just dragging your feet, you'll miss on all these opportunities because you're refusing to use your brain. It's not that one. Second time, I have a meeting with another one of you. I will not even mention names for the sake of their sanity. You guys, I'm seated there from 2 p.m. It was the meeting was supposed to start at 2 p.m. We sit there from 2 p.m. to about 5 p.m. And then this person tells me, ah, something got in my eye. I cannot come. <laughs> no, ser <laughs> no, seriously, something got in the eye and they couldn't come. And I'm like, okay, roll it back. When did this thing get in your eye? What time? You've been keeping me here for three hours. Were you at the optometrist place? Are you trying to get it fixed? Like, please, please, like... If, if you go there with that Nairobi mentality or New York mentality, you're going to kill people. You're going to fight people. You're not going to be friends with every, anyone because it's just that level of indiscipline. I, I, I wouldn't call it any other thing, guys. It's just indiscipline of the highest order. Because how do you keep somebody waiting for three hours and the excuse is what? What's the excuse? And also, like, Ghana is such a welcoming country, but I think they do not realize that once they welcome us, we are not Ghanaians. We're just part of the Ghanaian, greater Ghanaian community. Someone will, language is a big issue. No, seriously, language is a big issue. I am at ShopRite, the one that is on, I think, Labadi Street. I'm trying to go back to Osu. I'm trying to talk to a motorbike guy to just tell them I'm going to such and such a place in Osu. That simple conversation. I'm not even lying to you. These are things you cannot make up. The literacy levels in Kenya, like whoever you stop by the streets, if they're in the CBD, I swear to God, they're going to speak to you in proper... Like, I don't understand how somebody cannot just do basic communication. And it's not even just the low... The, like those who are in the lower financial bracket. It's even those guys who are higher up there. I mean, a corporate meeting, guys. Corporate meeting. You can't even make this stuff up. I mean, a corporate meeting... I'm sitting there. Then this person was doing a good presentation. They switched to tweet. Ah, back Shuro. I'm like, excuse me, um, I'm not Ghanaian, so could you please speak in English so that we can all follow? And they say, ah, oh, more Niger. I said, no, 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 I'm not Nigerian. I am not Nigerian, neither am I Ghanaian. I'm Kenyan, so please speak in English. And he said, ah, I will try and speak in English to accommodate this or brony petty petty. That was the last English thing he said. And then he switched back to Twee. And I was like, why? Jesus, why? Why are you trying my patience? Why are you trying my faith? I mean, there's traffic. And there are reckless drivers on the road who will not give me even an indication when they are driving. So why am I using my patience in a corporate meeting? Why? You guys, you guys, we need to do better. We need to do better, Okay. The other thing that phases me is religion. Guys, I don't get it. I, it's, I can't even call it spirituality. It's just a very bad obsession with religion. I was watching TV one day and I see one of your pastors. You know them by name. I'm not going to mention their name here. He had put a very sick child on the altar. That child looked sick, looked malnourished. They had HIV probably. And he'd put them on the altar saying, this child has HIV. Want to pray for them. God will heal them. And I'm like, why are you mocking God? Why are you mocking God? Is it not that God that you're invoking the name that gave Dr. Brain to develop ARV, to develop hospitals, to develop care for this kid? This child doesn't need to be at the altar. They need to be in the hospital. And then you can pray for them 
in the hospital in the church while well, they're recuperating in the hospital what like what are you thinking what are you thinking guys and i know we might not agree on this all of us but how is it that a really sick child is being paraded there it's 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 just not fair it's not fair to the child it's not fair to the parents it's not fair to the progress that we've made in healthcare. That's the reason why ARVs are made. Look, don't get me wrong. God heals people. And I would love for God to heal that child. But God gave doctors brain. Please allow doctors to do their job. As this 